But we begin with the race for the White House. After 73 million viewers watched the first presidential debate, the Commission on Presidential Debates is now promising new rules to maintain order next time. Terry Moran has more on potential changes and why they could put the debates in jeopardy. The president's debate performance has sparked a torrent of criticism that even his most ardent allies have struggled to contain. And Republicans on Capitol Hill are now distancing themselves from the president after he failed to disavow a far-right fascist group, the Proud Boys, saying this instead. Proud Boys. Stand back and stand by. The Senate's only black Republican, Tim Scott of South Carolina, calling on Trump to explain himself. Uh, I think he misspoke. I think he should correct it. If he doesn't correct it, I guess he didn't misspeak. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell stopping short of directly calling the president out, but clearly siding with Scott. He said it was unacceptable not to condemn white supremacists. And so I do so in the strongest possible way. Trump tried to walk back his comments, claiming ignorance, even though the Proud Boys were clearly described to him as white supremacists during the debate. I don't know who the Proud Boys are. I mean, you'll have to give me a definition because I really don't know who they are. I can only say they have to stand down, let law enforcement do their work. But when our Kira Phillips pressed the president, he still failed to denounce the group. White supremacists, they clearly love you and support you. Do you welcome that? I want law and order to be a very important part. It's a very important part of my campaign. But do you denounce them? Do you denounce I've white supremacists? I've always denounced any form. Of white any supremacy? Form, any form of any of that you have to denounce. At a campaign stop in Ohio, Joe Biden issued a clear condemnation. My message to the Proud Boys and every other white supremacist group is cease and desist. That's not who we are. This is not who we are as Americans. In the wake of the bedlam and rancor that dominated the stage in Cleveland, there's nothing smart about you, Joe. Will you who shut is your, up, man? Listen, who, Many are questioning if the first presidential debate of the year will also be the last. The moderator, Chris Wallace, struggled to control the chaos throughout the night. Gentlemen, is, <laughs> I hate to raise Chris, my voice. He, sir, it's just the wrong two, state. No, I understand. You've agreed to the two minutes, so please let him have it. He's now telling the New York Times the debate was a terrible missed opportunity and saying, I'm just disappointed with the results for me, but much more importantly, I'm disappointed for the country because it could have been a much more useful evening than it turned out to be. The Commission on Presidential Debates is now promising it will change the format of upcoming face-offs to ensure a more orderly discussion of the issues. And Terry Moran joins me now from Washington. Terry, what kind of changes is the Commission on Presidential Debates considering, and what are the campaigns saying? Well, it's a big job, isn't it? I mean, that was total bedlam and chaos in that debate. So the Commission on Presidential Debates, which is a bipartisan group, they've been doing this for 30 years to try to bring order to that chaos. They've decided, they haven't decided, but they're talking about giving the moderator a switch where he could cut off the microphone of a candidate that interrupted repeatedly or otherwise violated the agreed upon rules. Uh, moderator Chris Wallace, who, as you see, has some regrets, he says that might be dangerous. How do you ask a moderator to silence the candidate of tens of millions of Americans. That's very difficult. And uh, the Washington Post is out with an analysis of that debate. Uh, candidates interrupted 90 times in 90 minutes, and uh, Donald Trump interrupted 71 of those times. So they have their work cut out for them, and the Trump campaign is already saying they will not accept any changes to the format that had been agreed upon. The Biden campaign saying they'll take a look at what the commission comes up with. And, and the president got a lot of criticism even from his own party for that stand back, stand by moment at the debate when he was asked to denounce white supremacy. He walked those comments back a bit yesterday, as we saw in your package. He also said, stand down and let law enforcement do their work. How is that moment being received? Well, you could see that top Republicans, uh, taking their cue from the only black Republican in the Senate, Tim Scott of South Carolina, aren't satisfied at this point with the president. They're attached to him by the hip. Remember, the Republican, plat uh, Republican Party has no platform. They stand for nothing except Donald Trump and what he wants. Uh, nevertheless, there are serious criticisms of him uh, in public. You saw Mitch McConnell saying, uh, I can do it unequivocally without any weaseling at all. I condemn white supremacism, the president just seems to have trouble doing that. He'll do it. But given the way that he rips into everybody from Joe Biden to the media, anybody who takes him on, he has a full-throated, clear-as-day condemnation. It is a marked difference how he talks about white supremacists.
All right, Terry Moran in Washington, thanks. And Terry and I will be diving deeper into the issue of race and policing on Your Voice, Your Vote, the breakdown at 3 p.m. Eastern right here on ABC News Live. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.